Hey guys, Sebastian here for Green Sound Production. Uh, I decided I would make a series of video tutorial on Cubase 8. Uh, the reason why I'm doing this is because seven years ago I switched from Pro Tools to Cubase and I couldn't be happier to be honest because Cubase has so many great features for both musicians and audio engineer. So today's video is going to be about multi-drum audio uh, track quantizing. What that means is that uh, you have a drummer's performance uh, recorded in audio, no MIDI here, and we will quantize it inside of Cubase. Usually that would be a pain because you would have to manually cut all of the hits that are not tight and move them around to try to make them tight. So that's a lot of work, but Cubase has a, an amazing tool for that. Um, First, what we'll do, uh, we'll listen to the beat and see if it's tight and see what's in the beat. Uh, so let's do that. I'm sorry. So it's pretty good, actually. But since it's a pop song, we want it to be perfectly on the grid because there's going to be drum samples and synths that are going to be perfectly tight. So um, since it's really straightforward, it's just kick and snare. The first thing we're going to do is open a kick track. Here I have kick in and kick out. I'm just going to use the kick in for this, but it doesn't really matter. So usually when you open uh, the kick track, you might see something like this. Uh, what you need to do is open the hit points panel on the left side, click on the edit hit points button, and Cubase uh, might detect some hit points that are not really kick hits. That's mostly because uh, there, are, there are some leaks. For example, a snare hit will leak into the kick microphone. So uh, to uh, to make Cubase select only the kick hits, uh, there's a little threshold slider here, right uh, underneath the edit hit points. Uh, so you can move it around and see what it's doing. Uh, it's basically selecting the hits depending on their velocity, basically. So once you found the sweet spot and Cubase only selected the kick hits, what you can do is just close uh, the kick track and now we can do the same thing for the snare top since our beat is mostly kick and snare. So let's do the same thing for snare. Usually it would look like this. And if we uh, click on the hit points, edit hit points and move the slider around, as we can see here, uh, we want to make sure that Cubase selected all of our snare hits. You can also uh, listen to them uh, just by clicking anywhere. Um, it will play the hit points uh, right before where you click. So that's really useful to make sure that uh, these are the right hits that you want. You can also delete hit points if, for example, Cubase detected a, a kick hit here instead by holding the shift button and just clicking on a hit point. It will delete it. And if you want to create a new one, you can hold the Option button on a Mac uh, and Alt on a PC. And you'll see the Pencil tool appear and now you can create a hit point anywhere. I don't want this, so I will just delete it. So once you did the snare track, what you need to do is put all of your drum tracks in a folder. I already done that, but I'm going to show you how it's done. You select them all by clicking on the first one, shift clicking on the last one, and then you can right click or uh, option click on any of the tracks and select the move selected tracks to new folder. So it's going to create a folder just like that. Next, you click the group editing button on that folder. And now you can click on any of the tracks and it's going to select them all. So now if you do something to one of the track, it's going to apply to every single tracks. After that, you need to go to the little button here right beside the quantize preset. Uh, it's called open quantize panel. So something like that will appear. 
And as you can see on the first uh, part of the panel, uh, Cubase automatically set some stars. So I'm going to remove them all and only select uh, the tracks that I detected the hit points on. So for example, the kick in here, uh, oops, that's the kick out. So the kick in, I'm going to put five star and snare top. So now as you can see, uh, Cubase is showing me what hit it will use. Uh, to quantize the drum. So here, when there's a snare at the same time as a kick, I want it to always use the snare. So I'm going to put four stars on the kick. So as you can see, it's always going to use the snare hits instead of kick when both are playing at the same time. I'm just going to hit slice. So it just sliced every single hit to, to separate events. That's really crazy. And now you have to select the grid value that you want to use for the quantize. In my case, it's 1-4 since it's straightforward beat. Uh, you might have to select 1-8, one 1-16, one whatever, depending on your, your beat. And you hit quantize. As you can see, the tracks just moved in the background automatically. So uh, Cubase already put them perfectly on the grid, but it might create some gaps between them. So I have to hit the crossfade button here. So Cubase will create crossfade between all of the events. Uh, once that's done, I found out that the uh, by pressing the E button here, you can open the crossfade uh, preset panel. And I found out that the equal power value for drum quantizing is more natural. You won't hear any volume drop by using this, especially if you have cymbal hits in your uh, drum beat. So now let's just listen to it and make sure it's perfectly uh, tight with the grid. That's crazy, eh? Took me five minutes. So that's it guys, I hope you enjoyed that video and uh, stay tuned, I will upload more videos of amazing features that Cubase has to offer. By the way, that feature is available since Cubase 6, so if you have Cubase 6 and up, you can use that feature. So take care guys and see you next time.